Laser rod's been an important tool in our arsenal of tools. Standard laser rod starts in inches at one point and graduates up. When I go to a job site and I want to get a reading, say for a benchmark, say I'm going to do a pool patio, I might go over to my pool cope and set it on the coping. I'm going to move my receiver till it beeps solid. It's going to beep. Okay, I tighten it up. And now I look at my reading. This reading here might be 13 and 13 16, so a real awkward number. And all of a sudden, you've got to do all your elevations off of that point, up or down, depending on what you're doing. So the difference with our laser rod is we built it really easy, and it simplifies the math extremely. This is built on the zero system. We have zero here in the center, inches on the right, centimeters on the left. Inches on the right, centimeters on the left. From zero, it graduates up in inches and centimeters, graduates down in inches and centimeters. We also have a stopper. So this has an internal foot in it. This allows me to set any point on my job site to zero elevation. What we've also done with this laser rod on the other side is we create it with zero either at the top or I can reverse the pole where zero is at the bottom. So it's real handy if I've got a raised ranch with a, that I need a lot of elevation figuring out my step treads and whatnot. I can get my, my laser reading at zero here at the bottom and I can graduate down my 6, 12, 18, and so forth and so on. Today I'd like to talk to you just a little, about, a little bit just to show you the, the ease of installation on a pool patio. So say, for instance, I have a pool patio, and I'm going to go out, for instance, say 15 feet. ICPI recommends 3 16 pitch per foot. That's about 1 inch and 5 feet. So that's generally what I'll use as a standard, 1 inch and 5 feet. Say I'm going to go out that 15 feet off my pool coping, at that point, it's going to be minus 3. So I take my, my plan, and I'll write right on there my grade, minus 3, and I circle it. From that point on my patio, see, I'm going to go down three 6-inch steps, another 18. So 18 plus the minus 3, minus 21. I write that on my plan. I can do all this in the office, minus 21 at the bottom of those stairs. On the other side of the pool, say I'm out only 10 feet, minus 2. Write that on my plan. And now, say, I'm going to go up, say, 4 steps six inch stairs. So now I got 24 inches of elevation difference, but now this puts me the other side of zero. So I got to subtract off the, tw uh, the two inches from that. So at the top of those stairs, I'm going to be plus 22 inches. But what that allows me to do when my guys take our plan and they go out to the job site and they say, okay, Phil's got zero set of pool coping. I've got up and down elevations. They're going to pick the zero that's in the center of the laser rod. So what I'm going to do is I'll just find zero here. They'll literally lock the laser at zero, they'll get their laser spinning on sight, the internal foot now, they move this till it's beeping, beep, tighten this up. Now all their math is built into this rod. They know out that 15 feet, minus three inches, they're gonna slide up to the minus three. They're gonna go down again, those three six inch stairs, another 18 plus your three, minus 21. They slide up to minus 21, they have their elevation. The other side of the pool, right, you're going minus two to that out 10 feet, minus two. Now you're going the other way because you've got to add 24 inches now of elevation this way. So now you're plus 22. Now you're down here at the plus 22 point. So really fast, really efficient. There's no math. Once the site plan is laid out and your grade plan, you're just easily moving this laser rod up and down. If you uh, end up bailing a, spo a spoils pile in the way of the laser, now it's, it, you can't see it, it's out of visibility. You just simply can move your laser to another point. Now it's over here. Beep, I lock it in. I go home for the day, I pick up my laser, I set it up in a different spot. Again, I'm just easily just picking it up and locking it in. Been a tremendous game changer for us in the field. Our guys absolutely love this tool. It really speeds up uh, the process, helps with our dig out. And I always tell people probably the biggest way people are wasting money is over digging. We get on our equipment and it's easy to dig, 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 dig. So with this here, all I do to all my finished grades, I tell our guys add the 10 inches. That's your seven inches of ICPI certified gravel, your three inches of paver and sand. So a really simple, really quick way to uh, do your dig outs. So I highly recommend it. It's been uh, immense help to us and hopefully it can be to you. So our Maxi Square, this is a large, um, nearly eight foot unit. And this is for squaring up your pavers, uh, whether you be laying a big patio, walkway similar to this, and getting square to a building for my walk. It has a simple locking mechanism here. 
So I just push this out, then this is going to open straight up. So now you're starting to see how it comes to a square. It has two locking tabs here. So I'm going to just push this out and then it simply locks in. So that's how quick it is to set up. This is my square. And one thing really unique about that is a lot of times when you're squaring up into a corner, sometimes there might be a nub of concrete, sometimes there's a block in the way, sometimes you have a nail here for a string line. So this allows, it opens this corner up so that you're not buttoning it up against that, that tight area, whatever might be uh, in your way. So for this particular application here, obviously I got the building and I want to make a walkway that's square to this here. So I'm simply just going to set it here, out on my pavers. Step here. I'm tight to the building, I'm tight to my border stone paver. Now what I'm going to do on that outside edge, I'm going to take a chalk line and I'm going to chalk my outside of my walk. I'm going to drop it right down between my border stone and the square. You can pull nice and tight now. Okay, go in just a little bit that way, in, in, smidge more, right there. Push it down tight to the stone, You're down nice and tight. And again, if you guys are still using string lines, dry lines, I highly recommend trying a chalk line. It gives you a nice crisp line on your stone to lay to. You don't have to worry about the wind blowing it. You don't have to worry about somebody tripping on it. It's just a really sweet way to do it. This is going to be a, uh, a running bond horizontally here. So I'm going to snap another line, again, at half bond, so that I can lay a paver and then half bond, then lay a paver and then go half bond. So you can see here, I got two chalk lines. And again, just to explain it a little bit, this is going to be a running bond pattern. Again, these are pretty large pavers. Try to do this so you can see it. So now I'm laying here. This is an exact half bond. So this is the half piece will go here. I'll lay two pavers in the middle with a half piece on the end again. So neat little system. If ever you're doing this with a half bond, I highly recommend it. It'll be much faster, much more efficient for you. So to collapse it again, push these out. And these can lock in pretty tight sometimes. Drop this one here with the two prongs. Gets dropped first. This one drops over the top. These obviously go out and around it. This locking mechanism, you just pull it away. Just lock it down. That nub's gonna lock in there. Keeps it all together. Super easy, super efficient.